Hey everybody, it's Talks from Crits Happen. Thanks for watching and welcome back. I am here with a video for a video game slash board game slash whole new experience. It's called For the King. Uh, I absolutely love it, so a little bit of a spoiler a heads up. Uh, it is on Steam. It does have controller and keyboard support. I am going to be showing you gameplay from using a keyboard. Uh, it is a roguelike dungeon slash questing experience. There's a lot of play modes and it is an early access. You have a story mode, you have a dungeon mode, you have an adventure mode, you have a kind of a challenge mode in Hildebrandt Cellar. Um, but they all have different levels of difficulty, which will all determine the payouts and what you get for lore and loot, which are two very different things and cool things in the game. Uh, and you can do both local uh, co collaborative play, solo play, or online collaborative play. Um, it is very cool because there's elements of role playing. There's elements of character progression and character development. There are elements of luck and randomness, and hence the roguelike. This is what will happen when you start a brand new game. Uh, you will get a screen where you can pick three different people. Your party always starts with three people. I'm not sure if it gets bigger than that. I don't think it does, but uh, you can randomize, you can customize. Uh, yes, anyone who is watching and knows the name Arabeth is a callback to Neverwinter Nights. Um, but you can pick different classes, and I, I really like the fact I normally don't like this, but I really like the fact that their names are really interesting. So for example, the blacksmith, he is kind of a warrior. Uh, the minstrel is a bard. The scholar is a wizard. Uh, they're all normal archetypes. They just have very unique names for them. I'm not going to start a new game. I'm going to show you where I am currently uh, in the game that I am in. Now, I have died a couple of times, and this is part of the game, is that you're going to go exploring with a party and... Don't get too attached to them early on. You may very well die and lose them and have to deal with some things as you come about. So I have Grimhawk, Arabeth, and Zarin who are blacksmith, hunter, and scholar together. Uh, the blacksmith is kind of a warrior. Uh, the hunter is kind of a ranger hunter. Uh, and the scholar is kind of a wizard. You do not have to keep them focused on that. You can adjust them as you go through the game, but that will be their core kind of starting area. As you can see, it is a hex-based movement map. We've uncovered a little bit. I started in this area, Oriton. Uh, Oriton is the main town that you begin in. You are given a quest by the queen uh, to purge Oriton of the chaos. Uh, there are some things like the Sanctum of Life here, which is something you can dedicate yourself to. Arabeth has done that, and she gets a bonus to her health and health regeneration. Uh, you can only be dedicated to one sanctum. Uh, we've done our first dungeon, the Glittering Mines. We succeeded in purging that, which is one of our quests. And we currently have quests to get keys. Uh, you'll see here there's a little blue marker above the quest objectives, so we know that that's where we need to go to complete things. There's a third one somewhere, according to the quest giver, in this area, but we don't know where that is yet, so we're going to have to do a little bit of exploring. Uh, you do level your characters. You do have side quests. For example, I have this night market quest to go to the night market in the Golden Plains. One of the cool things is at the beginning of the game, uh, I did not have that night market open. And we'll talk about that. So here I have run into some surprise. It says keen eye. You never know what you might find on the roadside. It's going to test my awareness, which is what the eye icon is. It tells me with zero, one, two, or three successes, I don't know what I'm going to get, but with three successes, I gained an item. Now, this isn't a dice-based system necessarily, but it is a percentage kind of based system. Uh, so you see that this war pick is going to test my strength twice when I use it. I have a strength of 58 for this character, which is not the highest compared to others. So it may not be the best thing for me to equip. I may want to give it to somebody else. Whenever you are tested for your stats, uh, you have a, the, a higher percentage chance of succeeding with the test. And it's really just a pass or fail. Uh, but the higher your, your stat, the better your percentage chance of doing that. Um, so it's not like rolling dice, but it is luck-based. And I, I like it. It's really simple. It's kind of complex, but it's really simple. In this case, 
Side quest completed, had to deliver something to the night market. And again, the night market was something I had to open. We'll show you that a little bit later. You use lore, which you're going to get as you achieve quests and complete quests that will allow you to unlock things. In this case, the, uh, the night market offers some pretty rare and awesome things. So I'm going to buy some stuff, not just for me, but for my uh, teammates. Uh, and I'm going to be able to give that to them. Uh, there's some really cool things. So, like, for example, this this glass sword is really cool. It does 30 damage, which, compared to my pitchfork, is amazing. Um, but you'll notice it only tests my strength once. Uh, I can't use my focus, and we'll talk a little bit about focus in a second. But if I critically fail, the weapon will break. And critically failing means if you don't succeed at all of the stat tests. The pitchfork tests my awareness three times. The glass sword only checks my strength once. And if I fail that one check, I've critically failed. And hence, the glass sword shatters, which is kind of cool. I really like that. I think it's a really neat kind of element to the game. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm not, uh, I'm not so sure we want to go that route yet. So here's the challenge. I, I need to level up a little bit before I go after some of these things. So I'm probably going to be looking around the map and I'm going to be uh, looking for ways that I can potentially get my characters better and get them more experience. So uh, Zarin here, he is my scholar. He has movement and I think he's gonna attack this bone bard. Uh, you'll see whenever I hover over a monster, it shows a red kind of area of hexes. Those are the areas that people will be involved in that combat. So you can separate your party. In this case, you'll see that Grimhawk and Zarin are together, but there's also this bone bard and another bone sorcerer there who's down kind of a little bit south. Uh, I can ambush. I can choose to ambush. If I ambush, I have to be 100% successful. I have to have three successes. And if I do, I will only fight the bone bard. Now, I can use focus. There's these little hexes above your character. Focus allows you to guarantee yourself a positive result. So I'm going to do two and risk the last one and see if we can, we can make that happen. So we'll use two of our focus. We did get the third. So we successfully ambushed this character. That means we only have to fight that one. Focus can be used for anything, attacks, tests, anything at all. We have a timeline up here and we see that Zarin is gonna go first, then the Bone Bard, then Zarin again. That's all based on your speed and your abilities. Now I could flee if I wanted to. I probably don't want to because I just used my focus to get into this fight. I can use Blast, which is one of the things my weapon has, which does 20 damage with a 76% 76 chance to succeed on each test, but I'm gonna be tested four times. The next ability, Echo Blast and Shatter, those give better damage but or, or additional abilities, but at a lower percent chance of being able to succeed. So the really, really interesting thing about this game is that the common weapons, even the most common of weapons, will have different types of attacks you can use based on your stats. And I have found it awesomely cool to have to decide, does a common weapon that gives me multiple options of attacks or multiple abilities when I'm in combat, does that benefit me more than just moving to the next uncommon weapon I have? Or the same thing from going from an uncommon weapon to a rare weapon. It's been one of the most fun things I've had about this game. So in this case, I'm going to send Zarin over to the Sanctum of Purity. We're going to get devote him to that, and he's going to gain Poison Immunity and Curse Immunity, which is really good. I've been running into a lot of things that could poison you, and poison not only deals damage to you during combat over time, but out of combat over time. Uh, so poison can be a real pain in the butt. So it's probably a good thing to get my wizard a little bit of Poison Immunity. Um so the big thing right now, uh, you'll notice there's a, there's a ton of numbers all at the bottom of the screen and different things. Uh oh, Queen Rosamund. Everything appears normal, yet things could change rapidly. Oh, we increased our chaos. So the chaos has increased, so our enemy health is now 105%. This is part of the management of the game. You have uh, different things across the timeline. When you cross them, they happen. In this case, chaos has spread itself further across the land. Uh, the more that that happens, the harder the game is going to get. You will have the opportunity upon defeating certain bad guys or achieving certain quests and completing them to lower the chaos, which is really, really cool. The other thing, though, you'll see those, those little hearts over on the right. 
uh, you can revive your characters. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. So Deep Cavern, I'm going to use all my focus. Make sure I can do this. Yes. Oh, cool. I got a treasure chest. Okay. This is one of the cool things. This is a roguelike game. I had this same event come up in another game and a totally different outcome, even with five successes. That is really, really cool. As you explore around the map, you will run into these type of things. Uh, you could get ambushed by someone. You could run into a wandering traveler who is going to sell you goods. You could run into someone who's going to give you a side quest. Uh, it's just, it's really, really cool that everything you do has potential impact to the gameplay. I also like that they're not just immediately negative. It's not like you're exploring and suddenly everything around you is just crashing down on you. So Grimhawk is level three. Uh, you'll see that in the lower right of his portrait, there's a little level three. Arabeth is level four. Zarin is level three. I need to probably get everybody to four or at least to five. So I probably need to do a little combat here. This Sunny Birth, uh, this is something that I haven't explored in the game too much yet, but you can buy ship deeds, which will allow you to sail uh, from place to place a little easier. You can also buy this Caustic Ink. This scares me. Use this liquid to keep the Kraken at bay for nine turns. I don't know about you, but I don't think the Kraken is going to want to come hug us. Uh, you do not have to use all your movement. If you choose to not use all of your movement, then you can heal up, which is really cool. The other thing, you could potentially refocus and gain a focus at the end of your turn if you don't use all of your movement. Uh, in this case, sometimes it's better to position your people and not use all of their movement. Oh, another pop-up. Drea Pallor, the royal agent. You have found the bandit camp, home of the bandit king. Defeat the scourge before it awakes on the timeline and be prepared to suffer its effects. Okay, so we probably have to deal with that now too. Uh, and this is part of the game. It's going to throw things at you that you didn't expect, you didn't plan for, and suddenly you have to handle. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, that's a lot of killer bees. Uh, we need to ambush these guys. I'm going to ambush them uh, and use my focus to make sure I 100% succeed. Now, you can run out of focus. Uh, you can get your focus back by resting. But sometimes you have to make a choice. Is it better to use your focus outside of combat to make the combat easier? Or do you believe, based on the stats and the equipment you have, that it's better to get into a larger fight and use your focus to guarantee successes during the fight? That's a really interesting decision, and I love that. As most people know from following my channel and listening to me online, I'm a big believer that games should be a series of interesting choices. And For the King really nails that. And, and honestly, the thing that I am pleasantly surprised with is how much, just how much is in this game in already in early access in terms of decision making and in terms of actually making impactful decisions that can change the course of your adventure. And that's just, it's really, really cool. Um, I will say this, in this case, like I tried to ambush these guys, I didn't have any focus from Grimhawk. He had, he had been unfocused because he's been wandering around uh, and doing so many other things. It's never a bad thing to try to ambush when you need to. It will help you in the long run. Um, it can, at times, because of the timeline across the top, uh, push it a little further uh, down the road and make it a little harder for you to complete things in a certain amount of time just because you end up having to have multiple fights. So again, you have to make those decisions. Do I want to ambush or do I just want to throw down and, and have this wicked awesome fight? These guys, man, they are heavy. These guys have both physical armor, which is the blue, and magic armor, which is the purple. Meaning, if I hit them for 12 damage, physical, they each have six armor. They're going to block six of it. Oh, I'm dazed. That's not good. Uh, and they're, okay, dodging. That's good. Arabeth is really good at dodging. We have her evasion up really high. It's like 29 right now, which is awesome. Uh, and I've learned different classes operate differently with those stats. Like Arabeth is a hunter, so she's kind of like a, a hunter slash ranger slash rogue type thing. And I've given her a lot of things that give her evasion, which have really helped her. Whereas Grimhawk, uh, he doesn't have as much evasion, uh, but I've been trying to focus on getting him attack and making him just a really heavy, heavy DPS guy. Um, Zarin is coming along really well with his DPS since he got a weapon that was really helpful for him. Uh, so I'm going to possibly switch Grimhawk towards more of a tank. The other nice thing here, you can see 
as you finish fights, you get these different rewards and you can choose which party member is going to collect them. Again, if you end up in a fight, let's say only with one of your guys or two of your guys, you can then take them to a hex with another player and share with them, which is really, really cool. Uh, you can share everything. You share money, everything but experience because experience is kind of gained by each character as they're involved in different things. Now, I'm going to do something interesting here. I could run my guys all the way up to Parade and rest, but I don't want to do that because it is a good amount of time. Oh, I was trying to get everybody to the same hex. That's not going to happen here. Okay, so Arabeth is running into a Leprechaun. What does this mean? Now, when it's just one character in fight range, you probably don't want to ambush. It's really not worth it. Ah, he will evade any non-perfect attack. So I have to succeed in all of my tests. So like right there, I only got two out of three. Normally, if you don't succeed with all of your tests, you just do less damage. So using round numbers, if I were to do 10 damage and I had four successes and I only succeeded on two of them, I would be doing five damage. So this guy would evade everything that's not perfect. And that's where if you're out of focus, it can really be harmful. You might need that focus to make sure your attacks are perfect so that you can hit things like that. All right, so like I said before, you can move, run into events, attack, and then move again. I'm going to use my movement. I'm going to get everybody on the same hex. And the reason I'm going to do that is Zarin's turn next. I am going to use him uh, to put up a camp. Uh, he has a little pat, uh, pack, like a backpack, that's going to allow me to set up a camp. And the camp is going to allow me to heal, which as you can see, Zarin's lost a little bit of health and Arabeth has too, but Grimhawk is kind of suffering. Uh, so I'm going to use this camp to set up, and I can either meditate or rest. Resting heals me for hit points and a little bit of focus. Meditating will heal me fully uh, for health. Right now I haven't run into a situation, because I'm still early in the game, where resting doesn't heal you all the way up. Um, but I do get a little bit of my focus back here, which is good. And I'm, I'm basically trying to get to the bandit camp before he comes up on the timer along the top. And uh, I, I feel that this is a better decision to rest, heal everybody up, and then go to the bandit camp rather than run to Parade and then run back down. Uh, as you can see, whenever you end your turn, there are opportunities for new monsters to come onto the screen. There are also opportunities that will come up with like question marks and exclamation points so you don't know what they are. Whoa, 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 this guy's nasty. That's a cool hat. Uh, can we the ruffians? Come? Okay, well, this guy this guy looks nasty. He's got some two two guys with him. So this is a three on three fight. Whoa, seventy health. Wow, and eight armor, physical armor. That's nasty. Uh, let's get rid of some of these smaller guys. So these guys don't have any health. They only have twenty or sorry, uh, no armor, but they have twenty four health. Uh, so we'll get through them, and they're not hitting very well, which is good. So that's going to be helpful. Uh, man, I think I should maybe blast. Now, maybe let's just let's just focus. Let's just focus these guys down. Okay, let's get rid of him. Um, Zarin has the ability to potentially uh, splash damage and, and blast other people. Wow, now I'm not hitting very well. Okay, so let's see if we can get back to normal here. Um, I like his axe too. I hope that he drops something really cool for my guys. Um. All right, good. Now it's just down to him. Now he he is immune to stun. He is his attack is up. He's got eight health. So let's see what we can do here. I may want to go for some bigger damage. So I have five tests to be able to do this. My intelligence is eighty six, which is pretty high. So I might want to do that and take a risk. Uh, he doesn't have any armor against magic damage. So let's let's maybe go for it and see what we get. It's twenty nine. Versus 21. I mean, it's a little more damage. And, and again, good decisions. Fun decisions as to what you want to make. You have a less chance. Yes, yeah, see, I only made three out of the five there. So I actually did less damage than I probably would have done with my main attack. Uh, and those are risk and rewards. There we go. That's a nice critical. That's good. All right, we got him, I think. So his, his armor's blocking a lot. That, that's going to be tough for Arabeth to get through. She does have the ability to pierce armor with her spear. Whoa, 17. That's a big hit. Um, let's strike him. Let's, let's do it. Okay, good. That was really good. Uh, he does block a lot of that damage though. As you can see there, 17 damage minus the eight leaves us with nine. Yes. All right. Zarin killed him. The bandit camp has been sealed. That's good. Uh, we'll divvy up a lot of coins. That's really good. Uh, get a book of lore. That's good. That will help us get more lore. Oh, nice. The bandit king helm an artifact. Well, uh, hey, Mr. Grimhawk, you have a new hat. That's really good. Um, 
things like that, those are pretty easy decisions in which to make. But when the two different things that people are equipping are very close, that can be a really challenging choice. Uh, I think Zarin is going to go after this. Uh, oh, Zarin got ambushed by a bee. Okay, let's see what happens here. This is a killer bee. Uh, he He's going to attack a lot. He looks like he's going to attack twice later on in the timeline in a row. Um, all right, we should be able to... Uh, oh, that's not good. Okay, missing is not good, but we still did a good amount of damage. Uh, immune. Oh, nice. My Sanctum of Purity helped me. The, the thing I devoted myself to earlier... Uh, gave me immunity to poison. That's great. Uh, I love, love little details like that in the game that come out when you you make decisions that can help you later in the game. Uh, and that's that's exactly why I did that, which is great. That's even better. Uh, I'm ending my day and I've had a great day because I've defeated the Bandit King and I've defeated a bee on an ambush and survived it. And now I can continue to move. Sometimes you will get rewards like that. Uh, and those are random, uh, which is really, really cool. I could sneak past this person. I'd rather ambush them, though. I'm going to use uh, some of my focus and guarantee to ambush them because it's just Zarin. My other people are not close enough. Zarin has a lot of focus right now, which is really good. So that can be really, really helpful. And it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, he's a scholar. He's going to be doing all those scholarly slash wizard type things. I could use focus for my attack. This person has no armor. I think we're just going to straight up beat him in the head. Uh, that was a good hit. That was really almost one shot him. So that was good. I will, uh, I will, I will take an arrow to the head. Apparently, <laughs> that looks like it went right through my head. Uh, so yeah, welcome to early stage games. That's kind of comical and funny. Uh, it's interesting. You know, I, I have younger kids who play games and they play a lot of video games. Uh, my youngest, uh, Wyatt, who is 10, he saw this game and he immediately loved it. He, he loved the graphical style of it. He loved the blocky kind of nature to it. And he made the comment to me, he goes, it looks like Zelda and Minecraft, but a little better. And I, I thought that was very astute of him. It, it does kind of feel like that, which is really, really cool. Um, it's a game that I think board game players will love. Uh, I think that the the movement, the tactile movement around the hex based boards, the decisions of loot and equipment to equip to your characters as to how they help your party are really, really good. I, I feel the role playing aspect of the game is very, very strong. And, and it's really quite amazing to me how much detail is in here. I mean, even like we said before, the common weapons, like like this weapon that Arabeth has is a common pitchfork. She has the ability to just hit somebody or she has the ability to, with a less percent chance, potentially pierce their armor. Um, and that's just a common weapon. And, and, and there's a lot more to it. And I, I love that early in the game, it is both challenging and very risk reward. Uh, but it is also good decisions that you have to make throughout the game. Uh, I have played, this is my third game now. I have, uh, first two I died. <laughs> the, uh, the first two uh, were expeditions that the Queen sent out that did not, uh, did not listen very well, I guess uh, one could say, and, and got a little over anxious and a, a little ahead of themselves and put themselves in danger. Uh, but you learn, and that's one of the cool aspects of the game. You'll see in the upper right next to the end turn button, there is a little book and a number three. During the adventure I'm in right now, I have three lore that I have not spent. One of the things in the game is that you can actually back out from your game, go to the main menu, and use your lore to unlock things in the game. You can unlock classes. You can unlock uh, events. You can unlock uh, equipment. You can. There's There's a lot of things with the lore that you can unlock. And the cool thing about that is you don't need to restart your game. Once you've unlocked them, they will then become part of the world that you are in. Wow, this area has a lot of pop-up ambushes. Uh, 75 health. That is big. Boy, that is big. Uh, and that happens. And I, I really like it. I, I like the way it does it because sometimes, depending on how you've managed the map, they can be really, really dangerous. Sometimes, depending on how you manage the map, they can be really, really beneficial. Uh, in one of my first games, I was really stuck and I couldn't really get a piece of equipment to drop that would really help my people. I had a lot of okay common weapons, but nothing really big to push. And then all of a sudden, while exploring, I ran into a traveler who was willing to sell me weapons 
Uh, and that was really cool. That's a nice shield. See, this is common shield, and I have an uncommon shield. I, I like this common shield a little better. It's got a couple more abilities, which, again, good choices. Ah, you have stumbled upon the catacombs, a mini dungeon. These mini dungeons are short, but can not be escaped until they are cleared. A royal chest awaits you if you complete it. That could be really cool. I have not been able to get to these islands yet. We showed you earlier the uh, the boats. I have not bought a boat yet. I haven't gotten to the islands. So I still feel like there is a massive amount to be able to explore. And I've, I've probably played the game for about maybe 10 hours right now. Uh, and that that excites me even more, right? Like I'm looking I'm looking forward to using Caustic Ink, and I'm also looking forward to the Kraken attacking me, which I think would be really cool, uh, just because I like octopuses and octopi, and, and and I love I love Krakens. I think it's really really neat. Uh, so we're gonna camp again. I think we're gonna camp here and rest and kind of gain up some of our, our health. There is a statue over there, um, but the stats are not that great, so I don't think I'm gonna dedicate Grimhawk to it just yet. Um, it's probably gonna be something. That's probably gonna be a tough decision. I think if I remember right, I looked at it. It's it's you gain regain your focus. Let's go into the catacombs. The catacombs are level three. We are level three, four, and four respectively. So let, let's go into the catacombs. A royal chest awaits those who survive this short but deadly mini dungeon. So even though all of my characters are not on that hex, they're within range of the hex. So when I go in, I go in as a party. So let's show you a dungeon. Now, these, these events are like dungeons. Uh, they are completely roguelike. Uh, you'll see at the very top there are four rooms in this dungeon. So uh, here is the timeline. I'm going to fight a Crag Hulk first. Nice. Perfect hit. That's a great way to start off. Perfect hit means you 100% succeeded on all of your uh, stats. Uh, that's tremendously good. Almost good there. Uh, this looks like a pretty easy room, so I think we'll be able to defeat it pretty well. Yep. Uh, when you do finish a room, you are given a chance to do... Uh, both collect loot, but you also are given a chance to um, heal up, uh, not necessarily rest, uh, you can't like pop down a camp, uh, but you could take uh, herbs. Uh, one of the things you'll notice that in the lower left of each character's portrait, there is a pipe. Uh, this is kind of an interesting aspect given today's day and age. This, this game actually promotes smoking a pipe. Uh, your pipe, the level of your pipe, determines how effective your roots are um, and, and different herbs that you get. Uh, so like when you start the game at pipe level zero, there's a thing called God's Bard or God's Beard, and it will give you 15 health. When you level your pipe up to level two, you will then get uh, 30 health. Well, so leveling your pipe up is a, a big part of character progression as well. Oh, he completely whiffed on his thing. That's nice. I think I'm going to use splash damage here to get rid of the bat since he only has one left. Nice. There we go. Beautiful. Good. Again, common weapon choices about what you're doing, which is really kind of neat. Although I just realized I I bought things with Arabeth, I think, at the night market that I never gave to my people. I should probably get back to doing that. You get so wrapped up in so many different things happening. Uh, this is not as deadly of a mini dungeon as I thought. But, I mean, we are – we're doing pretty good. Um, we – yeah, I think we're going to have – our two are going to attack before the young witch. So, there – yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll knock her out. We are probably a little bit more powerful for this dungeon than it expected us to be, which is good, uh, with Arabith and Zaren being level 4. One level can mean quite a bit. One level moving up really can make a difference in terms of what you're doing. Okay, here we go. So this room 3 is a chest. Uh, there's no guarantee here. I'm going to let the person with the most health open it. This could be good. This could be bad. Uh, you'll notice it. There we go. So we got treasure. Uh, and again, you can choose who's going to collect what. Um, I have open treasure chests where monsters spring out. I have open treasure chests where uh, traps spring out. I have open treasure chests where loot drops. Like in this case, we got a lot actually out of that. That was pretty good. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use the loots. The loots are for bards. I could make my scholar a bard, but uh, it gets tested for different skills, and I haven't upped his skills that much. All right, here's our royal chest. This is the end of the dungeon. So we've done pretty good. That was a small, easy, pretty pretty straightforward dungeon. Book of lore. That's great. Get more lore. Silver padlock. Uncommon steel immunity. I wonder what that means. Steel immunity. Oh, that probably means that when my opponent has immunity to... Uh, stun or immunity to anything else, I could take that away from them. That's pretty cool. Leather armor, I think uh, I think Grimlock could use that. See? Tough decisions. If 
five armor, two armor, five armor may be better. It's it's a less it's common versus an uncommon, and in good decisions. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, it's fun. This is a game that is kind of cartoony. It's a game that is kind of serious, and and it really kind of falls in between itself. Of is it trying to be a little comical sometimes? Yes. Is it trying to be a little serious sometimes? Yes. Ah, uh, here's a stone hero, so I can refill my focus and gain 24 XP. It might not be bad for Grimlock. I mean, he's at full XP right now. Uh, that would be, I don't know, we'd have to find out and see how that works out. But anyway, this is for the king. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, beautiful, look at that. Look at that weapon merchant. There you go. You just randomly run into this guy. Uh, anyone thinking uh, to rob a weapon merchant, best come uh, heavily armed. Okay, oh wow, that's nice actually. That torch has burning. Yeah, fire smash and flip. Ooh. It's, it tests the same amount as my goblin blade, which is rare. That's a tough decision. Do I want that torch or not? Hmm. My goblin blade is really good. It's 13 damage. You get 5 evasion and plus 5 speed. I think I'm going to buy that U staff for Zarin. Um, but the, that, that torch is uncommon and does two more damage. It's breakable, but I would be able to burn people too. Yeah, I think, I think do it. That's, that's a good choice. Boy, that's tough, right? Here we are about to end the video and we get choices like that. It's really, really cool. So that is for the king. I really, really Cannot say enough good things about For the King. It is a wonderful game. Uh, it is very unique. I feel it it fits and scratches the itch on so many different levels. Um, so Iron Oak Games is the developer. Curved Digital is the publisher. Uh, they have just done tremendously cool things with this game. Uh it is very inexpensive on Steam right now. Uh, you can get it on Steam. I think I just bought it on sale for like $13.99. I believe it's $19.99 overall. Um, but it is a lot of value. It was just released in April. Uh, there's a lot of value to it. I, I've been really, just really, really happy with what I've seen in this game so far. Um, there is a lot more coming. I, I think there's just, there's so much more. In, it, it is not, and I, I made a comment earlier, I said it was early access, it's not early access, it is full release right now. There is a lot more coming for this game, and I think that that's probably one of the more promising things that I've seen about this, is that there's so much available in the game right now, and yet there is so much more potential that I can see. It's something that I've already sunk about 10 hours into, I can easily see me sinking a lot more hours into. And if you are a board game enthusiast looking for a video game that scratches that itch, or if you're a video game enthusiast who is looking for a little bit more of a tactile tabletop experience, I think this scratches the itch on both of those. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts, though. Do you play For the King? If so, what are your favorite classes? What are some of your favorite adventures? I've already found situations where the adventures I'm on provide such resonance with me that I'm remembering them story driven wise and walking away going wow this is what Grimhawk did and he went into this dungeon and this character popped up and this is what happened and and that's awesome I love that as I've long said games make memories and the games that don't are the ones you forget about and fall off to the wayside for the king is one that I think is going to be in my collection in steam for a very long time I think it's going to be something that's going to have my attention for quite a long time uh, and I'm very, very excited about it. So let us know what you thought about this video. Of course, leave a comment below. You can chime in on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram by searching Crits Happen. As always, we appreciate all of your comments. We look forward to enjoying your uh, information and all the things you want to share about For the King. But until we see you next time, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy all of your exploration and fighting times inside For the King. And remember, keep rolling those dice, and we hope they're all crits. Thank <laughs> you.